fifth anniversary and how it all began. Dynasty was about a very rich family and the joy of it was that all their money didn't make them happy. Come inside, we'll talk. No. No, you talk too well, Blake. It really was a prototype for dysfunctional, wealthy people. And that larger-than-life behavior is always fascinating. Well, here's your answer. It touched a nerve at a time when people wanted to be glamorous, when people wanted to be powerful, and when people wanted to see people that were like that suffer. <laughs> We thought we would try to do a show that does everything you're not supposed to do on television. Let's write about the extraordinarily rich that people don't see. There's going to be a large fat check waiting for you. The title was originally Oil, and ABC hated that title, so they came up with Dynasty. The beginning of the show was really the entrance of this secretary, Crystal, into this extraordinary life, being married to a real tycoon. Mrs. Carrington, I love you. I love you. I think that everybody's under the illusion that if you're rich, you have no problems, and we showed them that it's a complex life. You do not survive by giving anything away wolves and there are the sheep and if you're a sheep you get killed and you get eaten because that's the way it is in this world it was such a strong character so varied so multifaceted if he had problems it was within the family well how the hell can anybody respect the opinion of a man who put his hands on another man i could have endowed a foundation the stephen carrington institute for the treatment and study of faggotry Billy Crystal had done a gay character on a show called Soap, but that was a, it was a comedy, and so from a, a dramatic point of view, it was the first time. Get your hands off my son. Dad, we were... I said get your hands off it. Blake Carrington was, as we suggested all of the characters, were on the side of the angels, and if he did some things occasionally, like kill his son's gay lover, those things happen. The network really wanted a kind of a JR character, and we felt that this actress, whoever she was, had to be beautiful. Blake, when I'm ready, when I need a trump card, I'm going to play it. Joan Collins was a tremendous plus to the show. I expected that she was going to be good, but not to the extent that she was. She was a powerhouse. Blake Carrington. I loathe him. I think it was the first time that audiences saw on television a woman who could be evil and manipulating and downright nasty, but also had a lot of charm and sexuality. There's a lot of pressures in doing TV shows and a lot of pressures from sponsors. They didn't want me to be too gay, they had to be less gay, it was more gay, oh, but he has to have a kid, but he's got to get married. I just felt like at that point, it was hard to go any further with the character. When we realized Al was not going to come back, we had to confront whether we would recast or write him out. We decided the character was too important. They did the big oil rig explosion where there's plastic surgery and you take off the bandages and there's this sort of perfectly pink, dewy skin underneath. And at first, I tiptoed around a little bit, like, oh, well, I'm the new Steven. And ultimately, after a week or two, it's just sort of, OK, well, here I am. The hardest part is being afraid. Their response to the clothes was over the top. Every time I walked down the street, some woman would come up to me and say, I loved your outfit. Where did you get this? Where did you get that? Nolan Miller is a genius. Doing Dynasty was absolutely a designer's dream. Aaron Spelling said to me, I never want to see them in the same outfit twice, and I want them to just be spectacular. 
I'm not scared of anything. My most exciting time of Dynasty was when we became the number one show. 100 million people a week globally watched the show. The visibility was huge. The world was Dynasty mad. A number of companies will manufacture wearing apparel, all inspired by the hit show. The series Dynasty. The fantasy of Dynasty. Nancy and I have a little bet on the next episode of <laughs> Dynasty. <laughs> We loved the enthusiasm that everybody had for the show. We loved the fact that we were on all the magazine covers and everybody was talking about the show and that we, we felt we were invincible. Joan Collins is one of the most photographed and written about people in the world. People used to have these dynasty parties and on Wednesday night they'd watch Dynasty and they'd make believe they were the characters. It's going to make some huge changes in their lives. The show had a star quality. Uh, that's kind of the only way I can describe it. To have been offered the job on Dynasty was a dream come true, and I always, at all times, felt incredibly grateful to be there. What an amazing, amazing life experience. I wouldn't have changed it for anything in the world. It was a pleasurable, joyous, good time. Those are good days, fruitful days. How wonderful to experience it. How wonderful to have lived it. How wonderful to have had it. People always thought of us as archetypes, mm -hmm. symbols of something that represent. Yes. You were the um, devilish the, dark one. Yes, and I was the, the good, beautiful angelic blonde. Yes. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And so I think, actually, though, that we represent both sides of every woman. <laughs> of course. Yes, we do. See, that was the thing about us. We had this fantastic chemistry. I think that that's really one of the things that made the show so successful. Well, I must say, I don't think Dynasty could have been the success we were without you. I'm oh, so glad stop. they brought your character in. No, oh, you don't mean it. I do. I know you do. <laughs> Here is a certified check for one million dollars to get out of Blake's life permanently. Money. Your light motif in life. You married Cecil for it, and you bought off Sammy Joe with it. And now you're trying to use it to get Blake. Well, I don't need your money, Alexis. And I also think not just you and me, but John was such a pivotal part of it because he was so totally devoted to Crystal. Say it again. How much you love? More than life. Now, can you match that? <laughs> I think so. Showing you how desperately much I love you. You had this great relationship all the way through the show. He was very protective of you. You were very much a, a team. Because when I was 15, he gave me my first speaking part. Oh, really? And I did Bachelor Father. Did you have a crush on him? Of course. Oh, you did? Of course, before. at 15. I was madly in love with oh. him. You're a long way from 40. Not as long as you think. <laughs> Besides, I like older men, especially older men with some distinction. You have distinction. And when he showed up for Dynasty, I said, John, I get to marry you in this one. You know, I love this dress, and it matches your eyes. Oh, well, Nolan Miller. Yeah. And? What else? Nolan Miller. <laughs> Nolan Miller. Where would we be without Nolan Miller on Dynasty? Oh. He did my clothes for Big Valley. And he always had a problem because he had to minimize my shoulders because they were so big. So when we came on to do Dynasty and the shoulder pads came in, I mean, I looked like a football player. I saw you in one the other day, and it was massive. They had, it was like two growths on your... On your I know. People copied it. Within a year, they were all dressed like that. So we started the trend. do a lot of merchandising. We all did merchandising because it's what we had to do. I mean, I remember somebody came up for Christmas and gave me a puzzle of myself with a fur coat on. I don't oh. know how anybody put those pieces of the puzzle together oh, on the fur. Oh, that's right. Do you remember yeah, those? Yeah, yeah, I remember. And then the most hideous plate I've ever seen with you and me and John on it. I mean, it was just so ghastly. I love the perfume. Forever Crystal. They brought in a man that's called The Nose. 
And he came in and he brought all these different scents and I had to actually choose the ones I liked because they really wanted to do it for something that I liked. And do you remember the dolls? Oh, yes. Does this look familiar? Uh. <laughs> look at that. Talk about a bouffant hairdo. <laughs> Wait. I I but they've got your eyes. It's oh, got your look eyes. At that. Actually, the expression, it's really good, actually. It really is. The hair's different. I remember this dress no one made for I me. I know. Oh I remember that God. too. It shrunk a bit. <laughs> and down here is Alexis Morel Carrington Colby Dexter Rowan. I remember that dress. I remember it too. I wore it in jail when I was sent to jail with the hookers and oh, the well. drug addicts. And How appropriate, Red. Don't you dare walk away and leave me here, damn it! Let me out of here! Let me out of here! Let's say hello. <laughs> Darling, I thought, I thought you, you were, were dead. dead. Coming up, Pamela Sue Martin and Al Corley share memories of Fallon and Stephen Carrington. Boy, we are a pair. Gordon Thompson discusses the fun of being evil. I really was a son of a bitch. And a look at our hilarious bloopers. I said I'd be an alga... alga for you. <laughs> when Dynasty Reunion, Catfights and Caviar returns.